We're going to continue talking about uh, the discrete time for a transform and two of its very important properties. One is this convolution property and one is the multiplication property. Both are uh, exceptionally important for signal processing, uh, both for solving LTI systems, but also for modulating signals to produce interesting uh, behaviors and also uh, do things that you would like to do with your signal just by simply modulating it uh, and allowing you more flexibility for signal processing. So convolution and multiplication, we've talked about it from the point of view of continuous time. And now we're gonna talk about it from the point of view of discrete time. And in some sense, they're very similar as you of course would expect. And, but we, we just wanna walk through how this actually works in practice and see the application of this uh, in, in sort of a, a few examples. So let's start off with the idea of convolution. Uh, here it is, here's the representation. So for an LTI system, I have some impulse response, I have an input function that produces an output. So this is sort of the representation I wanna be thinking about and wanted to solve this problem. And what we showed before is for the continuous time case, if you put this in the Fourier domain, all you have to do is multiply the Fourier transform of the impulse response against the input signal and then inverse Fourier transform. A very simple and elegant technique, computationally efficient, and we're gonna see works here just as well. So if we do the transformation, you'd get exactly the same thing, which is now you're gonna look at the Fourier transform of this discrete signal, Y, and then you're gonna just multiply the Fourier transform of the of X with the Fourier transform of H. And so this is your representation. So you just take these two Fourier transforms, multiply them together, and you have your output Y. So very simple representation, very nice way to solve this. And so let's do a little just simple example to see how this works. Uh, and computationally, it's wonderful, right? Because all you have to do is do two Fourier transforms, multiplication, inverse Fourier transform, you got your solution to the LTI system. So here we're gonna work out an example by hand, which is your input signal, let's say is some beta n, u of n, which it, this is again, it turns on at n equals zero, n equals zero, h of n, the response is some alpha n, u of n, and we can just ask the question, what is the response of this LTI system? And so we can transform each one, because that is the first step, is to find the Fourier transform of both the impulse response h and the sig input signal x. So here they are. So we've already worked out these transforms, in fact, this we did before. So the transform of x is one over one minus beta e to the minus i omega. The transform of h is one over one minus alpha e to the minus i omega. So the transforms are very easy to work out. And in fact, these sit typically on discrete Fourier transform tables because these are very easy functions. And now that we have them, the solution y is the product of these two Fourier transforms. So we, all we have to do is multiply them together. Here it is. This is our uh, what, what the Fourier transform of Y looks like. And so all we wanna do now is invert this. So the inversion, uh, what we typically do once we have it in this form, the way we would typically think in about an inversion, of course, computationally, it's very easy to invert. But if you wanna invert it analytically, you wanna fit this into a form where this looks like something on one of the discrete Fourier transform tables. So what we're gonna rely on is partial fractions. We're gonna split this apart into two pieces. One piece that has the one minus alpha e to the minus omega here. The other part that has one minus beta e to the minus i omega here. And to do that, you have a coefficient of alpha over alpha minus beta here and beta over alpha minus beta here. So it takes a little bit of algebra to split this, but partial fractions. Nobody really likes doing partial fractions, but this is kind of the game you play when you solve uh, analytically things in the Fourier domain or using Laplace transforms. Both of them require typically to do some partial fractions because once you have this partial fraction representation that you're seeing here, then what you're gonna do is just look at your Fourier transform table and both of these pieces are sitting right there in the Fourier transform table. And so you can easily invert this signal. So in fact, once you do that, right, once you've split this in these pieces, this is the inversion. So you have y of n, the output is some scaling coefficient, alpha n u of n minus coefficient beta n u of n. So there's your solution to the LTI system 
which we got simply by Fourier transform the input, Fourier transform the impulse response multiplication invert. And of course, in this case here, we're able to do this completely by hand, right? And so as long as the, sim uh, the functions are simple enough, the Fourier transform tables allow us a lot of flexibility of finding analytic solutions. And of course, if they're very difficult, then you could just very easily do a Fourier transform computationally to Fourier transform the input signal, Fourier transform the impulse response, multiply them together, and then do an inverse Fourier transform. Okay, so that is convolution. We've already seen that same important property uh, for solving solutions in the continuous case. And now we want to talk about multiplication. So multiplication of two signals is a very interesting concept because what you want to do is maybe take one signal and <coughs> multiply it by a second signal with the goal of using the second signal to modulate the first signal in some advantageous way. So this is a very common signal processing trick. And uh, so what we want to learn <coughs> is how to make use of this and take advantage of this in signal processing. So let's first Fourier transform this. So now when you Fourier transform both sides, on the left you have the Fourier transform of y, right? So this is just, here's its representation. But y itself is the product of x1 and x2. But x1 and x2 each have their own Fourier transforms. And so if you were to put those Fourier transforms directly in here and work out some algebra, here's what you're going to find for the representation of the signal y in the Fourier domain. It's 1 over 2 pi, the Fourier transform of x1, convolved with the Fourier transform of x2, where you're integrating in your com over this convolution over theta. So this is kind of an interesting concept. What it allows you to do is essentially these two signals multiply together, shift each other in the frequency domain as you're seeing here. So this, what you'd want to do essentially in manipulating a signal is figure out what do you want to achieve using one signal to modulate another in order for you to either shift it around in the frequency domain and then perhaps filter and then pull back your signal. And this is exactly what you would do for instance, in the continuous case, I showed this where you could take an entire signal and through this multiplication, shift the entire signal in the frequency domain. Now, your band, your what was your low pass filter effectively becomes a pan pass filter and then you can kind of Fourier transform back from there. So that is the idea behind convolution and multiplication. They're both very simple operations, but very important and influential in terms of doing signal processing uh, on realistic signals. So, uh, very, and you can see they, they basically inherit the same structure as you have in the continuous case, but uh, slightly different, again, with the representation that you're using in the Fourier domain, which has finite band from uh, negative pi to pi with, that repeats itself.